Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, Happy New Year. Shnora uh, Vor 2023. Welcome to the first uh, session of Kurapa Yavkini of 2023. Uh, so good to see everyone here. And um, I'm very excited about this uh, session we have with uh, Matt Sarkissian looking at some odes or dach by uh, St. Nersa Shnorali written for the feast of uh, nativity or theophany. Um, so let's just say ganats uh, to the new year and uh, to to what we do here. So cheers, everyone. Cheers. And and one thing I'd like to add, um, most of you have probably seen our work out, Jesse and my work on Hemail, and I'm doing something else now, which I'm going to talk about a little bit. And I would not have been, I would not be doing this if it wasn't for this group. So thank all of you and thank you, Jesse, for that. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, well, um, Matt, you had asked me to say just a couple of things um, at the beginning about uh, dark or this genre. Uh, in English, we say odes usually. Um, and if anyone's been following the medieval Armenian poetry lecture series um, that I'm giving through St. Nurses, um, some of the uh, these these odes I, I discuss in that series, so I can just uh, summarize in like five minutes or so. Uh, so essentially, all of these uh, liturgical poetic genres emerged in the context of, of, of Christian liturgical prayer. Uh, the backbone of liturgical prayer is the Psalms. But the Psalms, of course, are a Jewish book and while there, from the earliest period, is a Christian and Christological interpretation of the Psalms, uh, the more Christian theology developed and the more uh, feast days were elaborated, uh, the more early Christian writers and medieval writers wanted to elaborate poetically uh, on the meaning of the feasts and the form that they usually uh, did that in was in these poetic liturgical compositions. So that's uh, the origin both of Sharagans as well as these uh, Dach or and other liturgical poetic genres such as the Gansas and other things, um, uh, other kind of genres. So St. Nersa Shnorali in the uh, 12th century uh, composed a great number of, of these. There's something like 70 to 100 or so of these odes that he wrote on dedicated to specific feast days and giving, as we'll see even in the ones we'll look at, very uh, deep poetic uh, mystical sort of reflection on the meaning of the feast or the mystery that's being celebrated uh, in the feast. And um, one of the, uh, St. Gregory of Nadeg in the 10th century is uh, kind of credited with founding some of these genres, uh, being one of the first to compose dolls and uh, gonses and, and other forms of this type. Um, in the next century, Grigor Magistros, who was I think the great grandfather of Nersa Shnorali or, or some, some uh, multi-generational um, uh, ancestor of Nersa Shnorali was the first to introduce rhyme uh, and, and a more, write in a more fixed metrical system as well. And um, Nersa Shnorali picked up on his, uh, some of his ancestors' innovations and uh, innovated further himself. And um, I think Matt is going to show us, in addition to kind of doing a close reading of these two odes, he'll show us some further examples of other poetic devices and forms that you can find in Nersa Shnorali's uh, work. So let me just go ahead and hand it over to you now, Matt. All right, thank you. Um, first of all, I, I hinted at this last time is oh, 
let me just backtrack a little bit. Jesse's lecture series on the poetic and medieval poetry kind of inspired what I'm doing now um, to translate some of these dogs. Um, but it, it had an origin in the Hamile. I mentioned that last time, and I wonder if anyone noticed where. And it's not the fact that his habit of close to the name is starts out the Hamile. There's something else in that kind of once removed led to this. And if no one realizes, then let me share a screen. And, and that's, that's, that's going to lead to the um, first thing I want to talk about. Um, Okay, this is, can everyone see this screen? So this is, this is volume two of what, what we've been, what Jesse and I have been working on. And I've been working on translating his odes and Jesse has volunteered or kind of, I asked him to write an introduction to it, talking about some of the background and some of the, how the, how the poetry developed in Armenia. But it started from the, from the Hamayl. Um, and I can remember what part it is. It's 15, nope. This one, the song to St. Sarkis the General. And this song was only um, five stanzas long. There wasn't much to it. And in translating it, well, not in, in translating it, um, just another backtrack. When Jess and I were working on this, I'd send him some of my drafts and he'd look at them and he was, been, he was busy over the summer. So it'd sometimes be a couple of weeks before he get, got back to me, which was actually a very good thing because with the time I had, I started looking into more stuff. And one of the sources that he sent me had a 15 version of this song. And I say, well, let's translate it. I, I put it in as an appendix. Um, so here it is. And it was, it was this line here and the peacock nursed lovingly you know I'm, i don't know any of these words so i'm looking at these words and i come across of all things an english translation of of one of saint narcissus's odes and we'll talk about that later it's actually kind of interesting and it was in uh o to hripsime so here's the here's the verses here of my translations of, of the Armenian from that old. So I did that about a year ago, or, or not a year ago, maybe like nine months ago. And when, when Jesse started his series on the poetic tradition, I said, let's, I said, why not translate the whole ode, which I did. So I translated that and then I sent it to him and he was kind enough to present it in one of his lectures. And that kind of was the, was the genesis of, of this new project. Um, one of the things I, a couple of things. One of the things that I found, and I'm going to point a couple of things out, is some of the language in these odes are absolutely beautiful. Um, you can't, and you can't translate the language. You can't, you can't, there's some rhyme and there's some rhythmic meter and you, you can't pick that up. It's almost impossible to do that. But just some of the wordsmithing is absolutely great. And I, and I, I want to go over a couple of things and show you how I kind of came up with what I think were good words for this. Um, so Jesse, if you will take your sheet, I sent you um, the one handout, the one thing with the different, with the, with the highlighting, just to read, would you, I'd like Jesse to read and I'll, I'll read the translation of a couple things here and there. Sure, um, do you want me to put that on the screen? Uh, no, I just not. Just read. You read, and I'll just read too. It might be easier because I just want to just get the sound of things. So, um, so from what I sent you, go to the last page, page sixteen. Okay, just give me one second. Okay, page 16. Page 16, the, the one that starts um, A Kuned. Yeah. So if you could read that and just in your wonderful reading voice, 
And then you can hear some, you'll hear some of the rhythm. There's actually a rhyme in these too. And then I'll read some translations. And then we'll, we'll do that for a couple other ones that are in this and talk about a couple of things. So I'm, I'm going to share the screen okay. just so that everyone can follow along. So, so here on the left. E kuner patavial i posor. Sagartun gamro rag iper chensor. Hars nazniv tu adyam koravor. So this one, there's not too many of them that are in four standards like this. And this one, this is what one of two of them that I've done so far. Um, meter, there's in the first three lines, there's nine syllables per line, and there's end rhyme, and the end rhyme varies per syllable. And then the last line is a refrain that repeats in any in everyone. And what was really funny, um, when I when I was looking up the the wonderful peacock line, I came up with this English translation. I think it's actually funny. And I don't, thou art colored having been plunged in a crimson dye. Thou art covered with leaves like a blushing apple. Thou comely bride veiled with thy blood, ripsima, angel surpassing in beauty. I just think that's kind of old fashioned. And, um, and then my translation, and one of the things I like to do is you, you got to try to let the words speak for themselves. You can't kind of, you don't fill in blanks because this is poetry. You don't try to turn things into sentences if, if they're not there. She is beautifully colored, stained in wine red, verdant, red colored like an apple tree. You, the gentle bride, veiled with blood, wondrously beautiful angel of Ripsime. So there's, you can see a little contrast between how I did it and someone else did it. Um, it's and the one thing too in this one, um, these these odes are almost like a Bible study. There are so, I've been finding so many biblical references in them that that's it's it's mind boggling. And it's 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 wonderful to find things. And this was a very interesting one too because um, what I call um, stained in wine red, and Alexander Good has plunged in a crimson dye. The, the wine red, the word for that is here, um, posor, which is an odd word for red. And as a whole, there are, that's been used by a number of people for this color. And it relates to, um, there's a lengthy passage from Isaiah. And Jess, if you want to scroll down, it's at the bottom footnote, footnote there. Um, so, Stained in, right, stained in wine red or blood red, literally stained in Bozra. And it's from Isaiah. And I'm just going to read a little bit of that, Isaiah 63. But who is this who departed from Edom, the redness of his garments from Bozra, who is beautiful with cloak and a force with power? I speak righteousness and justice of deliverance. Why are, why are your garments red and your clothes like those of a wine presser for treading a full wine vat? I stopped the wine vat alone, and from the nations, no one was with, was with me. I trampled them with rage and crushed them with wrath and brought them down to the earth. So that whole passage there is how, the, how that word becomes red. And actually, what was interesting, too, is um, what I found when in looking at biblical references is that some of the, the Armenian, Armenian is different. So I, so I look at the Armenian text. And this one, I actually looked at the Greek, too where this one says, brought them down to the earth, the Greek says, brought down, brought down their blood to the earth. So there's differences in the Bible references too. So, and that one word turned into a color. I thought that was very interesting. And, it, and it's in one of Narcissus's O's. Um, that is interesting, Matt. Just to comment on that, the posod in Armenian also has the sense in addition to red like wine, it's red like blood. Like which I blood. which I point out in the note too. That's yeah. that's one of my alternates in notes. And I like and it, and actually, if you go up go up a stanza in this one, there's another one which like um, the the last the third the second line for the bottom, fully trodden the wine vet with courage, and that's from Revelation. That's talking about trampling a. Um, you go to seventy six. He will tread the wine vat of the wine of the fury and anger of God Almighty. 
So that's why I picked, that's why, that's why the next line I picked wine red instead of blood red. So, yeah. cause it kind of goes hand in hand with that one. But both work well with her being martyred, obviously. Yeah. So if, so if you can go to page 14, there's some lines here that I absolutely love um, in, in four, on page 14. These four? Yeah. So you read the Ar you can read you read the English and I'll read the I'll read the English after you read the Armenian. Vorov mah merav mah bamp gantan vuin gyank takavoryats. Igyanas veradziats an mahan mah bamp as merial penutunas. Gama vasan mer zansen yur yet ima gama varutsyal. Voch pain ganaiken voch pov ardas vok. So my translate, you know, for the first one, life reigned by which death died with the death of the living one. Then with death, the deathless one raised this dead nature into life. Willingly, he placed himself in death for our sake. Willingly, he arose. The woman wept with weeping tears for the risen one of tears. I just look, you know, I can't catch the rhythm, but I can catch some of the words, some of the, some of the wordsmithing there. Mm -hmm. um, okay, go to, this one was an interesting, just go to page 11. And after this, I think we'll, we'll stop and come back to some of these more later because I want to get started on the rest of it. Yegen ye has bachan mahu nahas terzin, ye tsur de bars or me, hait ni diar and astuzo. This one isn't so much for the poetry, this one is for the biblical reference. The end with death came and reached the first formed one, and one day cold and clear, known to the Lord God. And that's a very obscure biblical reference. Um, and the Actually, don't go to it yet, because go to the next page, and there's a, there's more of it on the next page. Um, read the one there. Jamen voch diver, ye voch kisher, asmar karein. The time was neither day nor night, according to the prophet. So one of one of the things I one of the advantages I have of not speaking Armenian is I don't know what this word means, and I have to look them up. And cold and clear on a, a previous page pointed to something. Um, and now if you can go to the footnote, 57. Zechariah 14, 6 to 7. And it shall come to pass on that day, it shall not be light, and one day shall be cold and clear. And that day known to the Lord. It may be neither day nor night, and during the evening it shall be light. So cold and clear, and this is, you know, this is a, this is a, uh, a prophecy of, of the crucifixion because it turned dark. And just those words cold and clear pointed to that, that passage, which I thought was, there's, there's lots of stuff like that that I'm finding. Not, some of them are more obvious and some of them are, are, are real subtle like that. And, I, and when this thing, I, it's, it's been a great, or it still is a great learning experience doing this. So. And just to especially say kudos to you on this part, Matt, is uh the the hebrew text on which like all the english bible translations are made doesn't have this exact phrasing and so you only would find this reference from going to the text of the armenian bible uh so that those are even especially more difficult to discern so great job with that yeah i think they the one was a cold cold and frost and even the Greek has cold and frost. It's, so it's like the Armenian is even a little different than the Greek on that one. So, all right, there's maybe one or two more, but I, I can come back to those later if you want to get started on, on these. So if you want to pull up. So actually, if you um, has anyone looked at these in advance? Is anyone awake? Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, I read, I looked them over. Yes. Okay. So in this first one, then you can, uh, let me ask you, what is, what poetic device do you see right off the bat? Well, it's got, I mean, each line starts with I saw, so it's obviously, you know, repeating that over and over again. Yeah. Yes. That's the obvious one here. I saw, starting with right. I saw. Um, so if someone wants to, or Jesse's can. Does someone want to read and translate I'll, the first line? I'll read the first line. Sure. Yeah. I saw Avedyats Gabrieli Lerumen Yerani Ar Guis Mariam. So I guess it's today was delivered Gabriel or the Archangel Gabriel's, um, is it like melodious news to the Virgin Mary? Is that what Yerani would be? Good. I'm glad you asked that because I want to talk about Yerani. Um, I, I want to that is, um, you should know that word because you hear it all the time in church, but not in that tense. Okay. Um, yegani, um, and yegani, it's one of the, there's like three words that are in Armenian for being and becoming. There's yem, there's yeganim, and there's lenim. And this is yeganim. This is the present, this is the present tense, third person present tense of, of yeganim. Okay. So we're, we're more, more used to hearing Yeritsi. Yeritsi uh, is the ARS subjunctive, but this is the present subjunctive. And or that's just and, present indicative. And that's what, and one of the things I want to talk about a little bit, even if sidetracking a little bit, is this in, in terms of understanding classical Armenian, you have to understand what the tenses mean. And I think this is a great example, especially with this word, this word in particular. Um, in the Bible, well, first of all, there's 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 three three basic tenses. There's present, there's imperfect, and aorist. And imperfect, we don't really have to talk about too much tonight. It's a diff. We talk more about the difference between present tense and aorist tense. Um, some people think aorist is kind of like a past tense, and a lot of times it's used for something that happens in the past, but it's not. And in Armenian classical Armenian, there is no past tense and there is no future tense, even though words describe what takes place in the past and what takes place in the future. Uh, um, aorist is a, we'll just back, backtrack a little bit. In the Armenian Bible, which is the earliest written Armenian in existence is, is the Bible, yeganim, present tense yeganim does not exist. It's only aorist. It's either aorist indicative or aorist subjunctive. This does not exist in, in written Armenian going in the fifth century. And I think it came into being because they started translating in the sixth or seventh century, they started translating a lot of Greek and all the philosophical concepts they had to start changing words. Um, so everyone has heard of um, Yeganim and I'm gonna give you an example which kind of, kind of explains the aorist tense. Actually, it'll, it'll, it'll explain a little bit AOR's indicative and AOR's subjunctive. And, um, and excuse my reading because I don't read well in Armenian. Yev asats astvads, yegetsi luis, yev yerev luis. Did anyone recognize that passage? Let there be light. And God said, let there be light, and light came into being. Um, the first word, yegitsi, it's third person ARS, ARS subjunctive, and the yegen, yegev, third person ARS indicative. Hmm. And you say, let there be light. Um, it's subjunctive, so it's something that has not happened yet. But it's still, well, what, what the ARS tense does, it's not looking at time, it's looking at aspect. And aorist, as, aorist tenses, either it's air, either indicative or subjunctive, are, are an action that's completed. And it's kind of, it, it, it took me a time to get a handle on it. And Jesse sent me a great handout when he highlighted stuff for me. Because um, when you think of subjunctive, it hasn't happened yet. How can it be completed? But it's like a single action. So God said, let there be light. Let light come into being. It's something that is done and completed. 
It's not something that's happening ongoing, ongoing, ongoing. That's present tense is ongoing action. Um, and like, like was, like came into being, it's something, it's an action that was completed. It's over and done with, it exists. So that's just a brief overview of um, Ayer's tense, completed aspect, and even completed aspect could be future. Something that can happen now, it could happen in the past, it can happen in the future, it's completed. Same thing with present tense, you can have present indicative, which is happening now, present subjunctive, which could happen in the future. Tenses are not time, tenses are, are a grammatical construct that used to talk, used to understand the words and what the words mean in, in, in your conversation. So I'm glad you I'm glad you had a trouble with ye, yegani. And in in this line, I would I would translate that as comes into being. So that whole sentence then would be something more like today the good news of Gabriel fully comes into being through the Virgin Mary. Close. I'd say the Laruman and not Laruman fulfillment or completion. Right. So today, the fulfillment of Gabriel's good news to the Virgin Mary comes into being. This is this is actually look at the title first. This is this is not this is not nativity. This is nativity candlelighting. Right. And this is the night before. But it, this is actually talking about the Annunciation, right now. Okay. Gabriel is Gabriel. So it's the fulfillment of what was announced at the Annunciation. All right. All right. So, yeah. Yeah. The, announced, yeah, the fulfillment of yeah. So Leruman is an adverb to Yehani? It's a noun. It's the subject. It's the subject. Oh. The okay. fulfillment comes into being today. I see. Okay. Yeah. The, the, fulfillment. the fulfillment of Gabriel's good, good news comes into being today. Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay. And one of the things that I, I, I like about, I've only, there's only been two ISO odes that I've in there. And then maybe all, all of them. The, oh, Jesse, do you have the book? The little book. <laughs> the little book. Because I'm not translating all of those. I'm translating from a certain source that I found. And it's a little tiny book, which I think is, I love these little things. <laughs> from Venice. Yes. It's, uh, hmm. And one, one of the things with, with eyesore odes I really like, and they're, they're often used so these are odes that are for a feast, the Feast of Candlelighting. And I saw what it's doing, these are singing these odes, they're celebrating this feast, they're bringing these events of the past into the, into the present. And in this one, you see, you know, the, the fulfillment came into being 2020 years ago, but it's coming into being, it comes into being today. So, so what, what these I saw odes do, it takes that past event and brings it into now which is one of, one of the features that I really like about the ode. And so all the main tenses will be in the present, or the main verbs will be in the present yeah. tense. Someone want to take the next? I can read, but I had, uh, I had difficulty the, in all the, of them. Yeah, the language is much more difficult in these because yeah. A, it's poetic. Right. Um, and B, it's it's very, very condensed. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I, I spent left out. I spent, if I say hours, uh, I'm not exaggerating yet. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. It's getting the, the classes or the courses, whatever you want to call this, is getting more and more difficult. <laughs> Okay, yeah. let me read second verse. I saw on a pin in Namsian Ajmamb Arlutsial Arkhanti Gusin. So again, today, uh, the eternal, eternal nine months development of virgin's womb completed, I guess. 
I never completed this. I'm looking to my translation as well, and it's not fitting. It's it actually is, and that's 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 a that's not the literal translation of that word, but it's what I would use. Um, yeah. um, let's yell. Um, that is a, that's a participle. Um, it's an aorist participle. It's 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 built on an AR stem. Particles are like ver verbal adjectives. They're, I, I call them like magic words in Armenian because they can do so much. You can use them so many ways. Um, it can be used like a, like, a, like a past particle, participle. It can sometimes be used as, as a subject. Depend, it's, it's declined like a noun, like an adjective. So it has a lot of uses. In the, and and it's, it's an aorist participle. Aorist, so that word, whatever that word means, it's the action is completed. But when you use participles, you can use participles in the present time. And th this doesn't have a verb, but with this one, I would say is completed because it's happening now. And the actual, that one, um, what I found that word to be filled to the brim, like completely filled, but I, I would translate it as completed. What, yeah, what, what is Arkant? What is Arkant? Oh, Arkant. I don't know. It's a female only body part. Oh, okay. So it's not womb then necessarily. Womb is Horovine, right? It's yeah. Horovine. Okay. It, it is, it's womb or uterus. I see. Okay. Yeah. So, do you want me to read mine or? Sure. Um, Today, the timeless one's nine month term of growth in the virgin's, virgin's womb is completed. So what's he, what's he playing on is like the concept of time, yeah. essentially. The, yeah, that's, so. that, and it, this happens a lot in this book too. What, today, the timeless one's nine month term of growth is completed. Yeah, and look how nice the word for timeless is, anerp. Right, yeah. So to, it has no when. So what, one of the things with the nativity, especially, the, the incarnation theologically is extremely difficult to understand. You have eternal, timeless God stepping down into time, into, into here and now. So what are the, what these odes do, and in this one especially, and, and there are other ones that do as well, they they play on that. They contrast, you know, what's impossible to what's happening. What's timeless is a timeless term, which is a dichotomy there, and it's completed. So that's that's a feature of nativity odes, which I think is, which I think is very good. It, I, I like it a lot. It's it's the it's the it's an, a dichoma, dichotomic mystery Dichotomy. yeah that's put into into poetry to get you to kind of understand what's happening because you can't you cannot explain the incarnation in rational terms so these these do it in poetic terms with the words another thing too is you you, you um picking the right words too uh, eternal on there pick up you know timeless one like in in um in the ones that, in the one i talked about earlier though Anma, when I first translated Anma, I said immortal, but no, deathless, because it had so many other words of death in the, in the Ode. You, you can pick a better word to make it sound better in, in poetry. And that's that's what I try to do. Let me, <laughs> let me just make a comment on the grammar here. So when you're, when you're translating uh, classical Armenian or taught to translate classical languages, that when you get a sentence, like you're kind of stuck how to approach the sentence, they always tell you, look for the conjugated verb and like start there. So what gets tricky in these uh, poetic, in these uh, poetry is that sometimes there is no conjugated verb in the verse. So this, this line has no conjugated verb. And the thing to be aware of is that in Armenian, the aorist participle can function just like a conjugated verb. Um, 
but it's much more flexible, like Matt was saying. And so for that reason, uh, it's often pref preferable to use it in terms of Armenian style. So if you don't see a conjugated verb, look for an ARS participle. And in your kind of like English understanding, just know like it can function that way. So just like above here, the fulfillment of the good news, you know, that was announced to, to Mary comes about today. This Arletio also fulfilled, you can take as kind of, in essence, being like a present tense. But the thing to be aware of is um, Well, actually, so here, the subject of these will usually be in the genitive case, not not the nominative. But sometimes they have like the uh, the other verb with it, which like the 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 be word with it, and which could be omitted too. That's how I'm. Yes. Here, this this is essentially the subject, the growth the nine month growth of the timeless one today is fulfilled or comes to an end in the, in the womb of the Virgin. So this one's a little bit easier to understand, I think. Because <laughs> <laughs> it has a conjugated verb. Because it has conjugated verbs, yeah. <laughs> Someone want to take that one? I'll read it again with help of translation. Isorka hof said, Ikarak tafti unt kusin hiren ichavani. I think Alexia could translate this, not to fight you on the spot. Yeah. Uh, well, what I what I have is today comes uh, Joseph to the city of David in the place of the virgin to to the man of the inn that's a man is there's another word that's like that that's not man it means something else so you're close there mm -hmm. and then unt can also be with like along with which it is here just it comes with the virgin so let's what was so i Oh, okay. Scroll down to Matt's cheat sheet. <laughs> oh, not cheat we, sheet. It's like, I don't, it's how I do this. Or No, it's not a cheat sheet. It's an amazing uh, resource, which we'll share at the end with everyone. Um, so see down here. Oh, okay. Grotto. I is also a key. Or grotto. Why is there an apostrophe or whatever that is before the E? Because it's not a contraction. It's not like ust where they take out the ut, which that's I assume is so that you like start the next word with st. But that's that's a written or printed printed device. Because a lot of times, especially in in written manuscripts, the words are so close together that you don't know if that letter is part of uh, the last word or that's. So it's there. It's telling you it's a preposition on its own. Uh, yeah, you see it all the time, and that's the only that's the reason for it. Yeah, so it's it's so that it's clear that it's not a genitive form. Hope that peacock, right, exactly. Right, right. Oh, hope that okay. peacock. Yeah, I got it. It started in manuscripts and then was carried into early printing. So, what is the meaning of iron or iron? Cave. cave or grotto so so the cave of the i mean each of on what is each of on there we in like western art the the um, it's always pictured like in a stable or something right, right. Like that, you know but it in in eastern iconography it's um <laughs> the imagery is that they were in a cave right and so you can see that in all of these uh, images as well. 
Um, I, I, Ichevan is is just like a place you go down to, like a place you go to spend the night. Okay. I lodging in. Well, yeah, the... exactly. Lodging or in. But what's the meaning of Hiran? Father's lodging? No, Air means cave. The the the, the hewn is the, the the Y is is a preposition. It's the E that when it attaches to a vowel, it turns into that letter. So in the grotto, in the cave. In the cave of the inn. Yeah. Okay, this one's really nice. I'll read it if no one else wants to. Yeah, go for it, Mark. I sur yergnain arkan madane to yergravor arkai karo. Again, there's a, I don't know why that apostrophe is for the tub, but today uh, the uh, heavenly king enters. Um, I don't know, is that Kir? I mean, the, the, the some the the word of the worldly king, earthly king. I don't. So, so first of all, the the to there, the apostle that is actually a contraction. That's unt. Oh, it is unt. Okay. Yeah, because they sometimes they sometimes they'll drop those. I've noticed because they're trying to keep a a syllable count. I don't know if this right. one. And there's yeah. a vowel at the next word, so sort of making it one word. Kind yes. Of. Yeah. But it's but it's unt. Yeah, yeah, okay. And but kudo is what I'm is that kir? Is that I mean I that's, it's that's what I'm confused about. Yes, it is. So it must refer, maybe it refers in some way to like the census um that Caesar made. So like the heavenly oh, king oh, yeah. enters under the earthly kings census or like decree oh okay yeah, I didn't, maybe i didn't interpret it that way how did you interpret it well let's do the next one and then i think they go together i saw it as marked on vera kreen ashkara kraven ein hashkaren verin and this is a wonderful line too this is read that again please <laughs> i saw it as marked on Vera Krin Ashara Kraven Ein Hasharan Verin. That is really nice. I can reach me right if someone doesn't want it. So this will, so what he does too, you, there, there's all these compound words in there too. You got to break them apart to figure them out. I mean, you can look them up. I think you can find them with it. But what does it say? Break it apart. So today. Let go. Today, the human race. This is basically like is inscribed in the upper world or su supernal realm by that world conqueror. What's the second part? Kid, like writer or, or world writer or something. Yes. Oh, so it's not Kravel. Oh, um, I don't know. No, I think this is the instrumental. Case. I see. Okay. Yes, I, it is instrumental. Yes. Instrumental with the N on it. Today, the human race is written above by that world writer in the world above. So Which, going back to so going back to the next one, the earthly king and the, the heavenly king enters with the earthly king for writing data. That's how I read that because that's he's writing into the book of life. That's how I interpret the Corot in the in the last last um, line. Um. No, I think it's related. I think I still think it's related to the census. Um, so I think I would interpret it as like he's saying 
today the earthly king, the heavenly king, Christ, like the Logos, enters under the census of the earthly king, like the decree that Caesar Augustus made. But right. also today, the human race is inscribed into heaven above, like because the incarnation you get to uh, by the world writer. Yeah, but this this word can also has to do with uh, taking a census. Like if you see like okay. Ashara Kiranel is to take a census or um so it's like you know recording everything in your realm essentially. That that's how it seems to me. Well, that I'll leave my translating as world writer and put a footnote explaining it in a sense because it sounds better as world writer. Because yeah. that's what they're meaning. That's not like, and you can try to correct it later and I might fight you on that. <laughs> as long as, yeah, you can like explain what it really means. Yeah. It, it's, it's fine too, yeah. Is that maybe from Greek for census? Yeah, I think so. Cosmographia. Yeah. yeah, it seems like that's what that would be. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll read. I mean, nobody wants to. I saw Ihore an marmin zanyal vorti nuin marmanov zanani. Today, from uh, the insubstantial father is born the son with uh, this uh, the new, with the main with the same body born. That, I don't get that part. So it's again, it's all about paradox, just like over and over. So today so, is born. Oh, okay, I got it. Yeah. So the son who was begotten bodilessly. Oh, I see. By the father or from the father with the same body somehow is born. Okay. But couldn't you, could knowing be a pronoun, the same one? <laughs> Oh, that would make way more sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the how I read it. The same one is born with flesh. Is born in a body. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, that, that makes way more sense. Because there's, the there's the contrast. It's the same. He's yeah. born without flesh and corporeal, and he's born today with flesh. Very good. And I've seen I've seen knowing a lot, and it, I, most of the time it's 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 a pronoun he uses it as. Good. This is, uh, sometimes it is like an adjective, same thing or something. Most of the time, it's same as that as, same one that I just was talking about. Yes. Yeah. Good. So the nuin there, in a sense, is sort of the subject. It would be like nuina. We would put a an ut at the end, right? A, a, exactly. An article. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. That's the subject. Definitely the subject. And yeah, in classical Armenian, you don't need the the, the article, article with right. yeah, yeah, exactly. Alexia, do you want to read? Did you? Get yeah. This? And this one's good because it's got a parcel and a conjugated verb. Yes, thankfully. <laughs> um, and I got the, I think I have the next one too. But um, I saw Panen on Newt Tantratsial Hutagan Marmanov Heidnial Yerevi. So what I got is today the um, immaterial word thickened, I guess, with the material body appears manifest. Yes, I just would use congeal, but Very good. thickened. Um, 
And and noticing too, there's lots of on and then the opposite words. There's a, there's those that dichotomy, immaterial word, you know, materially congealed. What is hutagon? It's basically the same as newtagon. Oh, okay. Yeah, hut and newt are essentially the same thing. Just like in classical Armenian, you have nail and hail. Ah. Both mean to look at. Same with like hute and newt are essentially just like matter material. Mm -hmm. Did you want to do the next one also, Alexia? Sure. I saw Luzani Yergung Anitzitz nach Nahahoran Znuntiam Surkusin. Um, and I, there was something that I got a little stuck on, but what I basically got was today the throes of labor of the cursed uh, forefathers um, consume the Holy Virgin. Not quite. No. no. I think the issue is with Ludzani. Yeah, I had trouble with Ludzani. So the labor pains, yeah, exactly. Kind of like which was the curse of yeah. the for father is dissolved. So like done away with. Oh. Because of the birth of the Holy Virgin or in the birth of the Holy Virgin. Matt, how did you translate that one? Today, the labor late today the labor pains of the curses are dissolved by the Holy Virgin's birth of the first father. That could go. Oh, I think the first um, father goes with the curse. Okay. Yeah, it's the curse of our forefathers. Yeah. Okay. Because it's not a I mean, it's genitive. Mm-hmm. But what, yeah, just does it does it modify curses or does it modify birth? I would go with curses because it's after. Yeah, um, usually the the definite article is is put at the end of the like phrase to sort of like close it off. Okay. Yergunk so, anitzitz nachahoren is like one unit. And so you would, how would you say that the, the, the labor, the curse, our, our forefathers curse of labor pains? No, this is, this is, um, this is Genesis. The, the right, curse right, is sure. imposed upon humanity, the labor yeah. pains of birth. He, he knows, he's just saying like, how would you translate it? Like, I, I think just like the labor pains in English, we'd have to say like, which was the curse of the forefathers. Of the forefathers. Right. Yeah. Or father, yeah. yeah. Although it's really for mother. I mean, Adam yeah, is really with the labor pains, you know. Yeah. But I mean, which is why maybe ancestors might be is a, maybe a better way to translate that in this. Yeah, case? exactly. Ancestor would be better there. Thank you for correcting that one. And thank you, because I'm correcting my, what I did, so. Uh, so this one has an interesting um, Bible reference to it. What the heck is Dasna Jiaban? It usually has another word with it. Liav. Liav, Liao. So this is Dasan. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And then, but yeah, and this what? Is a weird part. Ari is, I guess, like a string. Exactly. String? Ten stringed. The ten string. Oh, 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 I see. Okay. 
instrument basically yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it usually has sagamosa on after it in the bible actually it always i think it always has it after it in the bible so today david with his lyre gave us a sign that was found in Ephrata, Ephrata. Mm -hmm. And that's a reference to something that Matt will tell us. Well, okay. I'm going to ask Hopefully. Mark because you you're supposed to. Do you when you when you're when you're in church as a deacon? Do you do the vesting of the priest? Yeah, but we don't do the. I mean, I just do Yev Yevus, and he does. He says the rest of it to himself. Yeah, that's what Paul is doing. Just, yeah. Yeah, but right in the beginning of the vesting part, there's a psalm that you and the priest are supposed to be re reciting. Right, which we don't. Yeah, which you don't. Right. And that's it. It's it's Psalm 131 or 132 in the Masoretic. Um, yeah. And I'll just I mean, it's a it's actually. Um, it's a it's a prophecy of the incarnation. Um, remember, O Lord David, and all his great and all his gentleness, how he swore to the Lord and made vows to the God of Jacob, that it, I will not enter into the shelter of my house, that I will not go up onto the, the bed of my couch, that I will not sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelid, eyelids or repose my body until I find a place of shelter for the Lord God of Jacob. Behold, we heard about it in Prata, and we found it on the plains of the forest. And it goes on and on and on. So basically, it's it's a, it's something. And Prata was another name for Bethlehem, an earlier name for Bethlehem. So this is the the shelter. the The Lord is going to become and sheltered in in Bethlehem. Um, um, all right. The Lord swore the Lord swore to David with truth and did not lie to him. From the fruit of your belly, I will set on your throne. If your sons keep my covenants and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their sons shall sit unto ages of ages on your throne. And the Lord was pleased with sign and chose to dwell with it. So that's basically a psalm that's prophesizing the coming of the Lord to Bethlehem. Let's see. Yeah, because I just looked up Ephrata. It's the uh, old name, old name for Bethlehem. I mean, yes. that's interesting. It means fruitful. Okay, so today, David, with his lyre, gave us a sign. Um, or today, the, the sign that David gave us with his lyre was found in Ephrata. So look at that last expression um, after the comma. It's... This is yeah. almost like a quote from the song. Yes, it's, we, it's, found, it, we found it. We found in a prophet. We found it. They left the it out. But we found in a prophet. Okay. And that it's a, a ten string harp or ten string. There's a Greek word psalterion or something like that. That the, it's in the Armenian Bible for it. Sagmosaron. So it's a ten string lyre. Whatever, whatever that, whatever they they thought that was when they translated the. Hebrew into Greek, whatever they thought that meant, they they rendered it so you know Salterian in the Greek, and then the Armenians turned it into Sagmosaron. Whatever that means, it's a ten. In English, word. you would just use liar, right? Because at least people would understand what that is, rather than yeah. <laughs> Not that anybody knows what a liar is, but they know that <laughs> they know that David, it's something with so. strings, and David played it while he was uh, yeah singing the song. <laughs> Okay. Is is now Bet Reem? Is there a reason? Is this an old form where they don't have the H? Because it's Bet Bet Rehem now, right? Isn't that the way we? Mm -hmm. write it in armenian yeah there, there could be spelling errors or i mean there are variants in the various manuscripts too so or is it just a way to save a syllable betrem you know what i mean sort of elide the two of them might might, might be that yeah
and Mikhail. Yeah, I think this is a typo, actually. It's it Mikhail, right? No, it's not. I think it's Mikhail. not Michael. Mikhail? Micah. Micah. Prophet. Oh, Micah. Oh, okay. Ah. Because there's another prof prophetic biblical reference, Old Testament, in this one. Did we read it yet? Go ahead, Alexia. I saw it in uh, Mikia, but Rem Sunza Dunya Real Yerknavor had seen. Today, according to Micah, Bethlehem rejoiced in becoming the home of the heavenly bread. Great. And that reference is um, Micah 5, 2 to 4. Um, it's also prophecy of the incarnation, incarnation in Bethlehem. Um, and what does Bethlehem mean in Hebrew? Or if you know, well, Arabic lechem is meat. I have no idea. So lechem in Hebrew is bread. In okay. Arabic, it's meat. Like Lahmajun. That's what Lahmajun is, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so it's ba basically, it's like the quintessential food. So like Arabs took it as meat. Hebrew, it's bread. But uh, so Bethlehem rejoices, it became, so not just the house of bread, but it's the house of the heavenly bread. Oh, uh, okay. Interesting. And I won't bother reading that we're getting... We're going long, so I won't read you that. There's a biblical reference there, Micah chapter 5. But um, you want so, to go to? Oh, God. Yeah, unt is like with again here. And then here again, we have another prophecy. Did you say, Matt, go, go somewhere else? Do you want to go to the next one? Yeah. Because we're because the next one's a little different. And um, get a taste to the next one. So we'll share the notes at that um, on the website. So did anyone notice any poetic features of this one? The version I have is different. This says you have a pen at the beginning of Parats instead of a pure. Yeah, I had a couple of typos. That's why I did it. I missed that typo too. Is that yeah, the... Okay, so that should be Parats. <laughs> there yeah. are some typos in there. Yeah. All right, I'll fix those. Uh... It's good, Matt. You're starting to make Western Armenian mistakes, even though you don't. <laughs> no, it's typewriter. It's finger typewriting mistakes. It's not a Western. <laughs> Why don't you zoom out? Why don't you like smaller view, Jesse? I'm yeah, okay. Give us a clue where we should be looking. Um. Don't look at the second lines of the stanzas. Look at the first lines of the stanzas. Okay, look at the first letter of the first lines of the stanzas. So it's like an alphabetic. Or it's like an acrostic with his name. Yes. Oh, it's so it's sort of der nerses then? Yeah. Yeah, kind of without the yish. Right. Der nerses sa. This one is Lord Nerses's. Oh, I see. He does that an awful lot. He has a lot of acrostics, and they're usually name acrostics. And in, in, I didn't want to highlight them here because I want to see if anyone noticed it. Yeah. Um, one, of the, one of the problems with these is it, it really messes up word order. So it makes it a lot tougher because he's sticking words that begin beginning of a sentence that would not normally be, be there. 
there is a certain hubris in that, you know, you got to admit. <laughs> and most, there is, and most of them are his names. There's a couple of them that are just the alphabet, A to Right, to yeah, K. sure. Like Arabo Blusso or something, that's obvious. But Yeah, uh, you know. but most of these are his name. Right, that's what I mean. That's When he does yeah. the acrostic. So. For some of these, though, it was like the only way across time that you would be able to tell who wrote it. Oh, oh I see. You know? Oh, that's interesting. Because they kind of, you know, they circulate, but like this way, you know. Somebody else can't claim authorship of it. It's like, no, 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 look at this. Exactly. You didn't do that. <laughs> exactly. But it's a neat device. And it's and it's hard to do. It's hard to, and when you get to Hume, there's no words that start with Hume. If you do it in alphabet. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why in Arabo Lusso, they do, they do it as a he, don't they? Hume's yes. Yeah, exactly. That's what he does here too. So not in this one, because this isn't the alphabet. But that's what he does as well. So did you want us to read a couple stanzas? Matt? If you just want to, do you want to go through it? In, um, um, let me. However you want to do it. If you want to keep doing it as like a, Try to people tr translate, or do you want to just? Well, let's do maybe the first two just to okay. kind of see how this one goes. Did anyone get to this one? Yeah, I looked at the beginning, the first few lines. Yeah, why don't you? Why don't you? Okay. Go ahead, Mark. Der Parats Anjar Zenyal Harach Kans Havidianus Nuin Zenav Isor I Bet Rahem Karak Tabti. Uh, the uh, Lord of the uh, what is Anjad? How do we translate that? The, un, the like, ineffable, yeah, exactly. The ineffable Lord of glories, born before forever, uh, before eternity. Uh, the same one, I guess, this is another place where Nuin is the yeah. subject, right? Yes, yeah. Nuin uh, was born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Excellent. The only thing I would have changed is I would have said begotten before the ages. Yeah. Instead okay. of born. Just right. Because yeah. there is that distinction yeah, yeah. in theological distinction. Although it's the same word here. It's the same word. Not always. It's, it's there's two different words that no, oh, but I mean in this line, it's yeah. in Yal and Zanav. So yeah. Yeah. And this probably is like adverbial for Zanyal. So like oh really? Okay. Ineffable ineffably born. Begetting or whatever. Yeah, okay. Born in a way you can't describe. I see. And here too is you have that dichotomy. Some right. someone born before begotten before the ages, begotten before time, born today. Yeah. This is a nice one. Matt, why don't you just lead us through? This this line. You want to read the now? Sure. Rapun Yagnain Imastutun Hor Anerin Han Panitz Masur I Han Sarudas Bat Yaltani. Um just as first thing, there are almost no there are not too many words that start with R. Yeah. <laughs> and and, <laughs> and it's it's in his name, so he's he uses them some of them he repeats a lot of time. Yeah, Rapun he does and yeah. That's yeah, in, it's like uh, Rappi or Rappi. And some, sometimes they'll drop an E or drop an H in front of it just to get the R. But the heavenly rabbi, wisdom of the uncreated father, is placed in a manger of beasts and girdled in swaddling garb. And and beasts is actually, you know, wordless ones. So it's like dumb ones. So it contrasts with the wisdom of the oh, previous line. Let me see. Mm -hmm. okay. On pan. So, and. Right animals meaning without reason or without speech so hanjarudas is swaddled or something swaddled it's like surrounded Sanjarudas. oh okay or like enclosed encased or enveloped yeah but badial is surrounded that's that's badial hansarud is the garments okay the, yeah the, the clothes yeah the swaddling guard and then masur is the manger manger right that's the word they use for a nursery school in I asked them. Oh, okay. 
Is that like Masraran or something? No, just Masur. I mean, at just least Masur, the, the, okay. 30 years ago when I was there. Mm. We use, I think, Manga Masur. Oh, I don't manga know. Masur. Yeah, that sounds familiar. That would make sense. Okay. Um, anything else you wanted to share with us, Matt? Not with that one. Huh. Oh, actually, um, do you want to, um, yeah, actually, there's one more I want to do. Can you go back to that? Sure. Um, that was actually it, very interesting. Um, the one the year needs can see, that. Yeah, oh yeah, I was just gonna point that out. So because there's some there's some there's something interesting, there's a couple of interesting things going on there. Okay, let's look so, at this one. Er gnitz terunk patsan. Einzor pagiats melok atan. Hor parpar hanchiats ta imborti tamalavaruk. So sometimes, sometimes they cheat with the. <laughs> they process. cheat, and sometimes they don't. They where they where they don't change it to. They have a yetch instead of a when they yeah. when it should be the a. So and actually, it sounds almost like peasant, you know, like dialect ergnitz instead of yergnitz. Yeah, you know well, I mean? yeah, or well, even like the Bolsahai dialect. Um, oh, they do that? Yeah, they pretty much never say yeah. It's always a. a oh, okay. S. No. Um, needs, yeah, but it probably is. Like, that's probably why he can get away with that. It's like, this is how some people would talk. Right. Eric needs to do puts on. So the, the gates of heaven opened. That those, one. Those which Adam closed through sin. Yeah. So before we get to the next line, um, what what is because I'm gonna say what are what does ta and chama mean? Because that's a very Where? interesting grammatical thing there. Ta and chama. Well, this is my son. Listen to him. Mm -hmm. Not he is my son. It means the one that's see. Armenian things get lost in translation in English. The Armenian has the, the, the dictic system, it has the S, T, and the N. Right. This is a T. So it means the, the one that's over by the listener. So God from up high is just talking to the people down below. Um, that is my son. I would I would translate it, he is my son, with knowing that that's what it means. It, he is my son, the, the he who is near you. Mm -hmm. Listen to There's him. no real way to like get that out in the translation. There is not. And then you'd, you'd almost have to explain it in a footnote. Yeah, but can't you say that is my son? I mean, that, you know, no, the word days that it's over you, there. You can, yeah, that or this, that. But this is also a biblical, this is also right from the Bible, too. And it's, right, right. Which, I mean, in Luke, uh, it can be, it's this is my son. Yeah. Although it depends on the translation, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Here is my son, depending on who. Anyway, yeah. So, so first of all, um, actually go up, go up two lines. because This is this. Um, Sarsial, that line. And the next, the second word there. Sarsial on Lord Tavoin. Yeah, that word there is, is important. Because. Right? On Lord Tavoin. Um, I'm Lord. So I'm Lord T. I'm Lord T. So I mean the sun, but what does Amul mean? So Amul. Chimki, did I never heard of it? Amul is, is barren. Couple, no? Barren? Amul. Mm -hmm. So the, the barren woman's son. So oh, in this case, 
barren or is it sort of metaphorical? It was the woman who didn't have sex with a man. No, it's, it's, son. it's the barren woman's son. And we didn't, um, cause we're skipping around. We're kind of missing some of it, but, but okay. who, who, who in the Bible were barren and had sons? Like oh. every other woman in the Old Testament. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, but relating to the New Testament, though. No. Well, Elizabeth um, and Rebecca, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, who was Elizabeth's son? John. Ah, uh, I see. John the Baptist. So, so here's what we're doing here is this is this is a nativity ode, but this is nativity theophany. So the, the, the this ode started out with nativity. Now it's trans. It's moving on to theophany. So these next few the next few verses are talking about theophany, nice. and that's what and that's when we go to back to taim or t. Mm -hmm. What what statement is that? At the baptism. Well, yeah, at the baptism. It's God saying, you know, the Holy Spirit coming down. And that's where Jesse pointed out to me, and this happens a, more than once in here. The whole This whole sentence is, he is my son, listen to him, is what right. this says. That wasn't said at the baptism. It was at the transfiguration. That was at the transfiguration. Oh, well, that's right, of course. Huh. So the, for what Jesse says, they, they kind of like, it's in like Armenian point. theology, the transfiguration and theophany go hand in hand. Because both are revelations of Christ as God, essentially. It's like I how see. those scenes are interpreted. And I think, in, I think there's a Vardavar ode, which is the transfiguration. I think they have the opposite verse. I think they have, um, he is my son with whom I am pleased. Right. Which happened at trans happened at Theophany. Well, in a sense, I mean, it happened at the baptism. In a sense, they're both instances of Theophany. No, but the but the exactly. actual the actual biblical quote right was was Transfiguration. This one, and then the biblical quote in, in at Theophany was with whom I am pleased. Something to that effect. So that's why I wanted to point that about you know, the, the, the reference that I want to talk about, the, the ta, ta, and tama, because that's, that's important in terms of really understanding the grammar. But this is clearly about the baptism. I mean, the line before is ahav nagir, you know what I mean? So. Oh, absolutely, it was. And yeah. yeah the, the, but, but they kind of interchanged the quotes because they're, because in their minds, they, theophany and transfiguration were so related. Interesting. And that happens a couple other times in 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 nativity theophany odes and in trans in the in the Vardavar odes. Okay, great. Maybe this is a good place to stop. Yeah, it's getting late. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want, I just real quickly point out some of the poetic stuff. Sure. Did you want to show on your? Yeah, I'll, I'll, let me let me share mine, um, and we'll do this real quick, um, just to show show what. So um, let me zoom in with the two. So the first one. Um, it's an acrostic of his name. Here there was a definite uh, say sure, is that how you pronounce it? Mm -hmm. but, you know, separating, I, I pointed out to say, say sure there. This was um, seven syllables, then the break, then eight syllables. It was, it was a, um, with, a, with the acrostic. He also cheated and put a, a yeah there, a yetch instead of an e eh as the last one. Yeah. yeah, he did. And he, it's, Pan there's the seed, yeah. <laughs> and there's different, there's different manuscripts and this different is ways of cheating. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, would yeah. these have been sung ever? Or, I mean, what's the, when would... Yeah, um, probably. But we okay. we don't really know for most of them, like, what the melodies were or or even in what 
always in what context they would be sung, like in which of the daily hours or in which part of the feast. But in general, of, these were written. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Some of them actually talk about at this feast and stuff like that. So they're yeah, but in terms of like specifically uh, when and what part of the service we, would they have been chanted about. like the way we do the psalms now? You think? I mean, does anybody know? I would I would guess like a more elaborate sort of singing okay. more like shadow guns. Right. I I'd almost say no because they have some of them have meter to them, meter and rhyme. Which which you you might lose in singing when you like extend those syllables for 2 minutes. In other words, like if you did it like a psalm, you would say like par par avedyat sainiv Gabriel Gocher Surpovuin, something like that. <laughs> there you go. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. So you're gonna re record these for us. No, no, no. <laughs> All right. So so here's one with um four sil four line stanzas, um seven syllables per rhyme. And a lot of them have end rhyme, like um on on on. But he varies them, which is nice. Yeah, he varies them by, by, by the stanzas. Um, go to. I'm just going to point a few of them out. This is serious work, Matt. But uh... well. Are you I got retired? A, I have a public. Well, I'm semi-retired, so <laughs> okay. I have a publisher that. So this one was neat because this one is an alphabetic, but it's doubled. Each line has is the same is the alphabet letter. Right. Which I thought was really neat. Um, well, like I would do so, except it's two instead of three, right? I mean, yeah. Um, this one also ends at. N, huh. there's a polk, an antiphon that continues it with the next letter. It's uh, it's not complete, so it doesn't go all the way to K. So I don't know if something's lost, but I haven't found any, seen anything where it's um, where it's. Con and one of the things with that with that is with with the doubled acrostic, you're going to get alliteration at the beginning of the verses, just by just by nature. Right. And it's interesting, most of the time, and in the in Audubon Lousseau too, he tries never to say the same word three times just because it starts with the same letter. And it seems like it's similar here, well, other than vor, you know, vor, vor. But I mean, some of the other ones, it look. I mean, it, my sense is he's consciously trying to use a different word rather than just say the same thing over and over again just because it starts with the same, yeah, the same letter, you know. I mean, he would. He was a master at language, and you know, just, just like or even the, like the chur, you have churuit and churov. I mean, it's the same noun, but it's different. Yeah, you know, different, uh, um, forms. different declination. Yeah, different declinations. Yeah. Um, we're going to nineteen. This one was interesting because it, it was a three line stanzas, which I had not seen before. It's also an acrostic, a name acrostic. Um, was, um, 11 syllables in the first line, 12 in the second and 10 in the third. And in translating these, most of the time I've been able to keep the line breaks once in a while, like this one, I just could not keep the line breaks. This is a, the word order. The wording just would not permit that. But look, you know, so far, I've been able to keep the line breaks pretty well. Um, this is another name acrostic. Um, seven syllables, rest seven syllables. This one has in end rhyme in all, all the stanzas. Well, in a highly inflected language, it's a lot easier to do that than it is in English. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that was the rhyme that Krikor Magistras used. In? 
in yeah well, it's it's always an e yeah because you can get both nouns and verbs right right yeah and this one oops so there's this one is um a name acrostic it has um syllables and a rest and same syllables there's something else going on in this one i wonder if anyone we got to look closely and this is going to be tough to pick up. Let me zoom in a little. Other that means an acrostic with his name. There, there's that and there's the syllables that the, you know, seven or seven or eight let break seven or eight, but there's something else going on in this one. It's hard to catch. Maybe if Jesse reads a couple stanzas out loud and maybe catch it. Noinako antor panan aswads, iskus panan araswads misht en. En an marmin an her her real, yepanagat imez ramoren. Ramit deren hansen arial and mer, veranil marmanov sirapar. Oh, Man. the last word, the first letter of the last word is the first letter of the, the word in the next line. Not just the letter, the first syllable. The whole okay. syllable is the same. Right. N, N. N, N. Oh, Ram, Ram. Ram, 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 Merzanar, Merzanal. Yeah. Nice. We cheated with the E there too, E Merzanal, but still <laughs> close. Enough. Who are we to cut, cut, him, cut him some Mark, slack? I could. Mark gives him a B plus. On <laughs> <Yeah. position. laughs> and the last one was the Hripsime, which is all the way down. So this one, it's it's also four line stanzas. What was the um, nine syllables, nine syllables, nine syllables, and eight. This last line is a refrain that repeats. And the first three in each stanza is different, but it's, there's end rhyme in the first three lines of each stanza. Interesting. So it's yeah. actually, this has been very interesting doing this stuff and challenging and um, Jesse's gonna have his hands still correcting me, but. <laughs> Well, great work, Matt, and thank you for sharing with us um, all of this, and it'll be exciting to see. Uh, we got a sneak preview of the second volume, essentially, in the sources from the Armenian Christian tradition. Um, so, thank yeah. you for coming. This is, I had fun doing this. This is, I'm, I'm, I don't know which I like better, the Hamail or this, because they're di they're so different. Yeah, well, definitely the language here is much more challenging, I would say, with uh, everything being so condensed with the poetry. So if it was, if it did seem particularly hard, um, I, I would say the language here is is more difficult than some of the, yeah, more simpler prose passages. Thank you, Matt and Jesse. Remarkable. You're very welcome. Yeah, thank you. It's amazing work. Thank you. I, I got to run. I'm still at the office. So yep. I'll see you guys next month, I guess. All right. Take care, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse and Matt. You're very welcome. That's our Christmas gift tomorrow. Yes. One day early. <laughs> That's right. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you again. Good show, buddy. Good buddy.